Hello YouTube. Today I would like to share with you a method to create a resource file to do player movement. I'm going to show you a quick demo of two resource files, one doing basic movement and the next doing a dash. We will then dive into the code and see how it looks under the hood. Here's yeah, so our player. If I push on the keyboard, nothing happens. Kind of a boring game. If I take this resource file and I push the play button, we now have a character that can move. And he can take damage, as you can see. So that's kind of cool. So if I take this one and I move it across, I save it and I push play, we can now dash. And if we dash through an attack, we don't take damage. But if we walk through an attack, we take damage. So that's kind of cool. Kind of cool. So how does that work? What I've done is I have created resource called movement base, and I've given it some parameters. So left, right, up, down, if we're doing a top-down kind of game, a speed, and there's some member variables that we use just uh, for helper functions. But the main crux is get velocity. And this is the one that will give us our direction plus uh, our speed and take in deltas. Now, this kind of code you've probably written many, many times. I know I have. If we go and look at our player script, we can see that it is just having this movement base resource. And then we are checking based on if this movement base, if it exists, then we will process. Otherwise, we'll exit out. We then call that move base velocity. We get we give it the delta and it will then give us a velocity and we'll use that and push that into our movement slot. Now the big advantage with this, go back to Godot, all these are configurable. So you can then sit inside the editor and get and tweak these values opposed to them sitting in code somewhere. I find that this is a lot more cleaner. I defined the input maps. So they are custom input maps that we've got. So that's the first one. Now, because we have this movement base, we can inherit from that movement base and give some more parameters for the dash. Because we are calling the same get velocity, we're overriding that function in the base. We can then do all the other checks that we need to do if we've got the dash key down uh, if it's been if it is being pressed and is it being released um, one of the things that we can do with the movement dash is we can customize what the ghost scene looks like we can override that you can also see here that I've got on dash start and on dash end and you've got parameters well, I can't figure out a way to get events to happen in a resource. And and I think from a design perspective, it doesn't make sense. But you can take that resource and use it as glue between two nodes and then pass the event. And that's exactly what happens here. In movements, we have a helper dash. Because I needed these timers, with lots of trial and error, I found that I cannot do a timer inside a resource um, so I created the scene and basically it is just the resource pushes the variables into this one and then we can if we pop back into VS code we can see that it will then do the signals and the dash will then just glue that in for us one other problem is that the resource doesn't know where it exists inside time and space. Set which node we're going to use for our ghosting.
while ghosting. This example I pulled directly from uh, another YouTuber that I'll link her channel in the description and the videos. Very, very good. Um, this is not really to teach you how to do dashing. My main motivation for creating this video is to document how I am going to simplify my code. The idea is to reduce the amount of code that is sitting inside any one script. There is a lot of duplication as you are going through a project that you start creating. Taking that duplication and simplifying it down into controls or resources makes a lot of sense to me. Thank you for watching and remember to be kind to each other.